We're speaking with a representative, it's Dan Severinsen, even yep. though they call you Doc, right? right. They call, right. Uh, Dan Severinsen, who is uh, running for Secretary of State here on the Republican Party for Minnesota, and had a couple questions about some of the things you had to say today. Yeah. We, you talked about um, the instant runoff voting, that you're against yep. instant runoff voting, but then you also talked about, uh, which seemed to me a little bit contradictory, about the uh, recount, and that we should have dropped the Independence Party out of there, because instant runoff voting is kind of doing that. How do you... Give me, give me the reasons why you have those two positions. Well, I think, uh, you know, in, in a, uh, a subsequent uh, election process like that, you've got a three-party system, and if there are uh, processes in which they come so close, you know, as the margins we were talking about, that uh, in order to get really 50, more than 50% of the vote, you're going to have to eliminate one of those and come down to the top two. So I think in that process, you're basically saying if there is a third party, that third party obviously uh, was the lowest one, and they have the least chance of actually getting included into that process. You take the top two runners and basically do a, an across-the-board vote again and say, okay, between these two candidates, who is your pick? And so you actually get a, a vote by the majority of the people in that process. Also, you talked about you investigated the recount. Yes. And you said that you found stuff. I didn't hear a lot of details, though, but you, you sounded like you were skeptical that it was done correctly, that the votes were all counted. Tell me what you did find. Well, you know, I've, uh, in that process, uh, I did a, uh, uh, an investigation on my own in this process, and that was uh, there were some allegations that were serious allegations from up in northern Minnesota where they said busloads of people came in that were being vouched for, and there were no voucher sheets. And uh, there were irregularities for the uh, po person that was a poll watcher who was supposed to present, present the credentials, and, and they didn't have the credentials nor the name of the poll watcher. And I felt those were, those were serious enough allegations that they needed to be investigated. And when I took it to the county attorney, the county attorney said, it's just a training issue. Either said that or basically said, well, it was a training issue and, uh, and they'll do better next time. And then when I asked for specifics, basically said, if you want that information, you're going to have to get it yourself. And so there, were some, there was enough at that point that said, hey, wait a minute, we've got some problems here because when you have an election, particularly a Senate seat that's decided by 312 votes, every vote counts, then you have to go back to the process and say, was that a legitimate process? And when you've got one precinct up there that I can't get answers for, and then I started to look at some of the others, and I looked through, uh, th through the whole process in terms of... Uh, the election uh, count that took place in uh, Ramsey County, I think it was, you had more ballots than you actually had on the tape, and it was converse in, uh, in, the, uh, in the Hennepin County, I think. So there were, there were inconsistencies on how that was put together. At one point they said, okay, we don't have the number of ballots, but we have this, uh, uh, I believe it was 34 more on the tape, and then they said, well, we'll just consider the tape. And then the opposite happened in the uh, adjoining where they had actually more ballots than were on the tape. And they said, no, we'll take the ballots at this point. And so there were inconsistencies in that whole process. And, and you know, when Secretary Ritchie talks about it, it was looked at through the courts, uh, it, it kind of boggles my mind uh, how that would be viewed by the Supreme Court as not an issue. But when they did that, they said they didn't see any full uh, uh, large-scale disenfranchisement or uh, premeditated maneuvering or manipulation. And I don't think that's, that was the right answer. I think the right answer is, was the, was the recount legitimate? And so that's a different question. And that's why I think it would have been struck down had it gone to the federal court. Uh, let's back up, because I, I want to go back to the tape in a minute. But the, uh, you talked about the county and the precinct. What county was that? What precinct? Do you remember? It was uh, Precinct 10 in uh, St. Louis County. Okay. And then the tape, uh, if I remember right, because I think I watched every second of our, of our coverage of the recount. Um, if I remember right, that was pretty much explained by ballots had uh, the absentee ballots had jammed and they'd run them twice. Uh, did you were you aware of that piece of information or? Well, you know, I, I when I was down in uh, southern Minnesota, I went into uh, one of the auditors and I said, "Hey, you know, how did that recount? Did the rec ballot reconciliation go okay?" And he said, "Yeah, well, we were only one off." And uh, and as we went through the process. We, we come to find out that that's exactly what had happened. And so with that process, when they say if there's 134 ballots uh, difference there uh, and we're going to go with the tape instead of the ballots, what you're really saying is there were probably 134 ballots that were run through twice, but they went with the count on the tape. So now you're double counting a number of those ballots. And in fact, one of the judges in that process uh, said it's very likely that some of these ballots were counted twice. If that's in fact the case, 
and that was from one of the judges there, then that ought to have been brought to the Supreme Court to say, hey, this is, this is, this is a violation of the 14th Amendment and, and desperate and uh, unequal treatment of ballots. If I, but I also remember if the election law and the, uh, the way that uh, the precedent's been set with election law and counting is that if there is no perceived change in what's happening, those little issues do not matter. It's when you have uh, premeditated and fraudulent activities that things should be challenged and that, that, would, uh, that would prevail at the federal level, correct? Uh, I guess that's one view. If you're talking about precedence, I think precedence is always being set, but I think even more importantly, all of this is, uh, are issues for debate, uh, and what's done is done. And I'm running my campaign on photo ID. Photo ID is one of those issues that is widely properly. Let's talk about photo ID. You yeah. said that there was a race, that 20% increase in turnout, and it, they happened to have photo ID. What, I, I missed again where that was. Where was that? That was in Indiana. In the 2004, they, uh, they elected or they uh, passed it through the legislature. In 2006, the first uh, race that it was implemented in was in, in Indiana, and they saw a 13% increase in the number of uh, voters that turned out to the polls. And again, in 2008, they saw another 2% on top of that. And is that 13% compared to the previous presidential election year or 13% compared to uh, the previous off-year election that would have been, uh, if that was 2006, would have been 2002? You know, I'm thinking that it was in the previous election, so it would have been in the 2004, which would have been a presidential, which would have made it even more significant because that's a huge, typically a low turnout, which is uh, another issue that Secretary Ritchie talked about, the threefold increase in the number of uh, military votes that were counted. Now, he's comparing the numbers of 2006 against 2008. 2008 was a presidential year, and obviously you're going to see more participation in a presidential year, so I don't think there's anywhere close to a threefold increase in the military ballots that were counted. And then... Uh that you, Secretary Ritchie also mentioned earlier in the debate that one of the big drivers in voter turnout is a hot race. Was that the case in Indiana, or was it just a normal election year? Now, my understanding it was, and I, you can't quote me on it. I mean, you can quote me on it, but I, I, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know whether or not that was, uh, there were special considerations in that. But I think the, the point that does, it does speak to is that there was a 13% increase from uh, the 2004 uh, four to 2006, and then there was another 2% on top of that in the next presidential race, and uh, that's where you saw a huge increase. So uh, the whole issue was, will photo ID disenfranchise the voter? Will you see a, a voter decline in the amount of participation from voters because they're being kept from the polls, and that was not the case. Disenfranchisement, though, usually refers to people who are denied voting as opposed to people who are encouraged to vote, correct? Well, disenfranchisement, I think, is, uh, speaks to disparity or unequity in how the ballots are access, uh, assessed or accessed. Okay. Yep. Uh, last question, because I know you've got places to go. You've got a campaign to run. But um, we're, we're asking everybody, because of the, you know, the influence of the Tea Party here, yeah. uh, in, in, we saw it happen out in Delaware. We, we see a rise in the number of people who are kind of identifying with that. Yeah. Do you identify yourself with that? Do you encourage people who identify with that to support you and the Republican Party? Where do you stand? Well, you know, I, I, uh, I often wear a pen. I don't have it on today. It says, we the people. And uh, really, uh, I, I think what that move is saying uh, out loud and screaming, uh, particularly when you've got uh, almost a million people that go on the mall with Glenn Beck uh, putting together a rally, is basically people want to get back to the Constitution. We are a constitutional republic. We are not a democracy. And I think that we do our students a disservice when we call ourselves a democracy. France has been a democracy for, uh, for a long time. In the same time frame that we have had one constitution, they have had 55. And so it really speaks to, are we being uh, governed by a document or are we referencing a document that has a, a solid foundation? And in the, the case of the United States, we do. We have a constitution that has been honored for 234 years. And I think that is what you're seeing in terms of the Tea Party and the people that are really uh, about getting back to the Constitution. Should the government live within its means? Absolutely. Should we be reg regulating every form of, of uh, an individual's life? Absolutely not. That's what our founding fathers believed, that less government was better government. And when you read through the Constitution and the, and the, uh, the papers, the Federalist Papers, you begin to understand that they, they knew about democracy, they knew about some other forms of government, and they were really passionate about making sure they didn't make the same mistakes. And I believe they embodied that in our, uh, in our current Constitution. 
Kind of going back to the question, though, do you, do you identify with those people? Do you encourage them to support you? And do you see that group possibly being dissatisfied with the Republican Party? And that's one of the things that's happening here? Yeah, I, I think uh, rightfully so. I do. I, I have spoken at a number of uh, Tea Parties uh, speaking to the constitutional issue. Are they pushing back on the Republican Party? I think probably a little bit. And I don't think that's bad. I think it really... It, if, if we didn't reconsider where the Republican Party was and we're continually migrating, uh, we lose our moorings. And so that's why this is so important that we go back and say, you know what, uh, what they're saying probably has merit. And, and we need to get back to the place where, where this is representation of the people, for the people, and by the people. And that's, uh, that's my passion, is that we would actually uh, have a government that represents and not, uh, not a form of professional politics or a form that... The government is really uh, uh, being served by the people the other way around. Dan, thank you so much for your time here. Are there more thank debates coming might. up here? I don't. Yeah, there will be. I think on the 9th of uh, October we've got the uh, KSTP debate. Okay, well, we'll look forward to seeing that. And then on the 24th, I think we've also got a debate uh, as well. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Well, Good. We'll look on your website to get the information. Thank, thank you, you so much.